On Monday, Oklahoma reported 6,900 new COVID cases. And while that includes the weekend, it is the second highest new case total since the pandemic began. This comes as the state administration and the White House are arguing over mask mandates. And with cases soaring, hospitals are concerned about running out of room. Rory Taylor has our report. The reality is that hospitals have limited resources. Earlier this week, hospital networks across the state came together with a message. Delta COVID is filling too many beds. As of yesterday's report, there were 1,392 patients hospitalized in Oklahoma with COVID-19 and 51 of those admissions uh, were pediatric hospitalizations. Doctors warned that the metrics of estimating the severity of the situation have changed from last year. While the rate of infection hasn't caught up to January yet, the rate of hospitalizations has increased. At the peak of the pandemic on January 13th, Oklahoma was seeing 4,200 new cases per day. So right now we're at about 53% of the peak that we saw in January. But hospitalizations are different. We saw at the peak just under 2,000 hospitalizations in Oklahoma for COVID-19. And right now we're just under 1,400 people in the hospital with COVID-19, which puts us at 70% of the peak. So the key message here is that a larger proportion of people who are being diagnosed now with COVID-19 are ending up in the hospital. Meaning that Oklahoma doesn't need a new record of cases to overflow our hospitals. Dr. Bahar Malakuti is a neurohospitalist and medical director for stroke at Mercy Hospital in Oklahoma City. She says while their unit is used to accepting most patients, their ability to do so is already cut short. Mercy has been able to accept an average of 36% of those patients needing a bed. I cannot stress enough, this is not normal. Our normal average acceptance rate is 90%. When we have open beds, we are able to accept nearly every patient that needs to be transferred to our hospital. And this is currently a physical bed issue at Mercy, not a staffed bed issue. That's not to say staffing isn't an issue across the board. The most important change is that we do not have the staffing levels available to care for patients that we had a year ago. This is hard work with a large number of patients needing an unprecedented amount of care. COVID-19 puts our caregivers at risk, not only at work, but also out in the community. Sustained risk, fatigue, and trauma have contributed to an existing medical staffing crisis statewide. To help combat that, Mercy Hospitals announced Thursday that they're raising starting pay for all positions in a Mercy Hospital to $15 an hour, paying more than what 40% of all hospital jobs pay across Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas in an effort to attract more staff. Nurses who are on the front lines of COVID warn that while the virus is putting more people in the hospital, those infections are also more aggressive. Not only are patients flooding into area hospitals at a rate higher than this point last year, but the patients are sicker. In my firsthand experience, they are taking fewer days to need critical care and fewer days to reach the need for bypass machines or ventilators. These infections, as we know, are also hitting younger people. Our patients are, are different than what we had um, in the winter time. We know they're much younger. Um, the average age, as you saw on the board earlier, is 56. That's a full greater than 10 years uh, younger than our average age back in the winter. The average age of patients on a ventilator is 51 years old. Um, they are unvaccinated of the patients that we have admitted to the hospital today in isolation. 90% um, are unvaccinated, 10% are vaccinated breakthrough cases. Dr. Julie Watson, who works with complicated pregnancies for Integris Health, says that our youth aren't the only demographic being put at a greater risk when unvaccinated. These vaccines are safe and frankly protect pregnant women who are all at high risk for severe illness with COVID. Our bodies change in ways when we are pregnant that makes us more vulnerable to this deadly virus. We know now from, the, from tracking the data since 2020, unvaccinated pregnant women who get COVID are more likely to require ICU care, to need a ventilator to breathe, and are at increased risk of dying from COVID. This coming at a time that misinformation about vaccines has been focusing on new mothers. And we know now from following more than 114,000 women who were pregnant and got the vaccine, there are no increased risks of stillbirth, birth defects, or loss of pregnancy. 
these vaccines are safe for you. To be honest, I wish that most vaccines were mRNA vaccines. It is some of the cleanest technology that I have seen as a physician and a scientist. As healthcare providers, uh, we really truly believe in the concept of informed consent. And so for us, our goal is to educate uh, our fellow Oklahomans, to really educate fellow Americans so that they'll make the right decisions for them and their family. And so we are encouraging folks to wear masks. We, we do believe that you know, maintaining social distance is a tool that is effective and does work. Hand washing, as simple as it sounds, is another tool that is effective and does work. And then obviously, uh, vaccination is a, is a tool that we know is effective. Rory Taylor, The Oklahoma News Report.